Hello there internet dwellers, my name is Baz and welcome back to the channel. Today we are reacting to three analog horrors that were sent in by you guys on Discord. We know all of these people and they are fantastic creators and I highly suggest you go in the description and support them for yourselves by liking the video, subscribing, all that good stuff because they are amazing at what they do. Did you know that if you are a member of this channel you actually get this video like literally four to five hours earlier. You basically get the videos when I upload them and then I schedule them for the public. So whenever I upload is basically like two to three hours before anyone else sees them. I think the other day it was literally six hours. So if you want early access to videos and also exclusive Discord channels, if you join my Discord, then be sure to become a member today. The first video we're gonna be watching was recommended to me by Ivo on my Discord. Project Britannica, the Mauritania Archives by Jack G Animations. Found amongst old tapes from a dear friend, this documentary got banned and removed from the public eye back in the 90s, so it's a miracle some of it still survives. Surprised to see TBS allowed a typo to air. Is that is that Jack messing up and being like, oh, screw it, it's part of the law, who cares? You know what, let's not question it. It's definitely TBS, okay, definitely TBS. I'm gonna be drinking my highly sugared energy drink here just to get into this in cooperation with granada studios i remember granada studios at the dawn of the 20th century the future seemed bright technological advancements in shipbuilding have led the world to head. great new heights uh, the great geez. nations of the world connected by magnificent liners but two ships the biggest and fastest of their day would yep. send the industry into turmoil the and industry 4,000 people to their deaths. Their names, Mauritania and Lusitania. Oh, good lord, no! The curse of the Lusitania sisters. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Andrew Carnegie have like a massive, uh, no, I guess it was steel. Never mind, guys, never mind. Ignore, I was, I was about to go into a whole thing about uh, Andrew Carnegie, but his, it's steel, I think, not, I don't know, I don't know what he was in charge of. He was the richest man in the world at one point. So I did miss a couple of videos um, from Jack, because I thought that they were just like celebrational videos, as in like showing actual historical footage, which I guess it was, but it was still linking into the storyline. So the Olympic went missing in 1998 in this universe, and somehow a appeared around the Isle of Man or Isle of Wight, June one of the two, would become a and was found game. by the Royal Navy, completely stripped of its hull paint, just like the Mauritania was back in 1911. In the annals of maritime history, it was the day the construction of a new ocean greyhound began with the laying of her keel. The struggling Cunard line, reeling from the loss of the Campania in 1904, I understand why people like kind of obsess over these things. You know, like people like trains and planes. It's just because of the, the complete size of them, I think, can be very awe inspiring. Ships, especially, are huge. And it's like, man, this is, really is a, a fantastic man made invention right here. Like, so much like science and engineering goes into these things, and you can see why people become obsessed with them. Competition from the latest White Star Line steamers whose luxurious appointments and passenger services were proving to be superior in almost every way to the Kinnard 21,000 tons, jeez. Facing mounting challenges. Almost as big as Queso. <laughs> Kinnard was compelled to take decisive uh, action. sorry, I'm sorry. At Swan Hunter Shipyard, where the chief was palpable amongst the crew working tirelessly seven days a week, one poignant incident stood out. Max McManister, a 17-year-old from South Shields, ah. unfortunately became unwitting. Hang on, did, what was the name? Man McManister. The working tirelessly seven days a week, one poignant incident stood out. Max McManister, a Max McManister, 17-year-old from South Shields, unfortunately became unwittingly entangled in a trap. Oh, was he the kid in the elevator? What began as a light-hearted gesture amongst his peers, tragically left Max trapped within the Mauritania's double bottom, unnoticed uh. by those above, completely entombed within the hull, without any escape. Whispers of peculiar right. sounds and even distant singing coming from within the unfinished hole the vessel circulated in the yard. Oh, yeah. interesting. Could they, okay, so 
They're, they're, they're suggesting that the Mauritania was haunted. The truth remained obscured until guilt prompted a revelation months later. Uh huh. Nevertheless, the launch of the Mauritania in April 1906 and your outfitting by winter the same year stood as a monumental achievement for Cunard, heralding the birth of a new era. Right. Okay. So that that kind of puts things into perspective, like because they always mention like the someone in an elevator or maybe like I don't know if the elevator incident happened after this. I'm guessing it did because they said this was in 19. When was this? And they got trapped on the bottom deck or something like that. So could this mesh potentially be a vengeful spirit of some sorts manifesting onto the ship and taking the lives of other people as like a, a, a revenge? Months after a grand farewell amidst music and cheering crowds, the Mauritania's fate took a grim turn. Discovered adrift in the Atlantic three months later, she was devoid of life. Yeah, so it was on the loose, no, the Olympics maiden voyage that they came across the Mauritania. And it had like exactly the same as how the Olympic is going to end up, stripped of its hull paint and no one on board at all and a horrible stench. Now the whole thing of like the, the, the paint being stripped suggests that it's like chemical, like bleach almost compound. And if it stinks, bleach kind of stinks as well, but maybe the mesh has like certain properties similar to bleach. Or maybe it leaves a tray without a trace, just like bleach can. Like it covers up like blood and Captain stuff, McIntyre right? Captain of the Olympic pointedly described the haunting scene in his biography. With Olympic's passengers transferred to the tramp steamship Prometheus and the Canadian Pacific Railway steamer Empress of Britain, the Olympic towed the Mauritania back to Newcastle, a solemn journey witnessed with all worldwide. Okay. Wait, what? The Mauritania... Hang on. Go, go back. The Olympic towed the Mauritania back to Newcastle. The Olympic towed the Mauritania, so, got you. A solemn journey witnessed with all worldwide. Okay, interesting. Well, we knew that happened anyway. That was at the very start of the series, obviously. But we still don't know what this mesh was. But I think we got a little bit of backstory there with the whole kids. Uh, being found at the bottom of the the bottom deck there could have something to do with what the mesh is. There's two September theories. 1st, 1911, amid somber farewells along the time, the Mauritania was towed to Ross in Scotland, where she met her end. The legacy of Kennard's Greyhounds. Yeah, what actually happened to the Mauritania at this point? Marred by tragedy, included the disappearance of over 2,300 souls. You didn't mention that bit of the stat. I love how <laughs> it's like a documentary on the ship. It's like, oh, you know, God bless the ship. And, you know, thank you for your service. By the way, 2,300 people also disappeared on the ship. But, you know, that doesn't matter. The ship can rest now. And the loss of more than 1,500 lives. The names Lusitania and Mauritania would fade into obscurity. Well, no how? Spoken by Cunard. Oh, yeah, I'm sure the Cunard doesn't want anything to do with that. Such an impressive ship, though, for its time. Like, the, the early 1900s. Crazy. Curse of the Lusitania Sisters. Oh, hang on, hang on. That kind of uncensored for a minute, a moment there. That's the kid. All right. Here's my theory, guys. Is that maybe it is that kid that is responsible for the mesh there was two theories i initially had the the one before this was that when the um well actually hang on no that can't be right i was gonna say that when the lusitania crashed into the iceberg it crashed into something and like like maybe like alien kind of life form inside the iceberg that then passed onto the ship but it was the mauritania before the lusitania that was infected so that can't be right that's how it goes right the mauritania was infected first like it was found out the suggestion here is that the death of this boy 
something Max McMilster or something like that. I'm, I'm sorry, I've completely forgot the name. They are the reason why the ship has this mesh. It's like some kind of manifestation of vengefulness. Maybe that's why the people that are killed by the mesh or absorbed by the mesh are found in like the engine rooms or the elevators because that's where this kid was. It was right at the bottom and no one found them. And it's almost like their revenge of being like, you didn't find me, you're not going to find this person. Although, you know, they were found, the dead bodies. Um, that's just, you know, a little crackpot theory, I guess you could say. But Jack, I love how this is shaping up, man. Honestly, it's becoming one of my favorite analog horrors just from the storytelling alone. And like the whole like ship thing itself is like really, really interesting to me. Like the, the, the size of these ships and what these ships stood for and like the time around all of this happening was very, very interesting indeed. And yeah, it's, it's good to know a little bit about history, even though it's an alternative history. I think this will put a lot of young people and even older people like myself uh, actual old man over here onto the history of ships they might go research it for themselves and i highly recommend you do guys it's a very interesting topic indeed that was jack g animations guys be sure to go like and subscribe all that good stuff we're going to move on to the next video the next video was recommended by bloopster12346 on my discord normal cuphead game by vibing leaf Rightio, so this is a normal Cuphead game, guys. Free Cuphead online. Online would be freaking cool. You can play like two player, right? Like local play, but... Oh, wow. This is a very like 2007, 2008 YouTube tutorial kind of core, that kind of era. Um, oh my goodness, true gaming, true gaming free. Free full Cuphead game online, both mobile and PC for free. Sensational pace. Just like that, click here to play. That Nothing could potentially go wrong here. Look at that guy's face. Look at that man's face. He looks like he smells bus seats for a living. Nothing could potentially go wrong there. Let's go. Load it up, baby. Your connection is not private. You are definitely getting a virus, buddy. This is old school, man. Yeah, I would... I would immediately stop. The game actually interfered with you editing in the music. Click any to start. Which is the any key? Cup face. Cup face and his buddy Eric. Wait, his buddy brother Eric. Why is one of them called Cup face and the other one's called Eric? Were the parents high when they named the first one? Has went to play pace with the guy. With the guy with the golden spoon. The guy used his magical golden spoon to steal his buddy Eric. And Cupface is now in need for revenge. Are you ready for the wonderful adventures of Cupface? Hashtag. Click to start. Well, this should be certainly interesting. Oh, this is just like Cuphead. This is this is amazing. It's I'm I'm back there in the game right now. I remember this. Can you imagine, like, some poor kid downloading this? I downloaded a virus, and then my pants fell down. The virus in question. Wow. Look at that freaking... Look at that walk animation. This dude's got, like... like the. What is that? He's got, like, a freaking Adam Sandler facial hair on the go. Why are those things to the left and the right? Talk to the guy with the golden spoon. Your buddy Eric is my new helper. To get him back, I would like a can of fingers. I am the man with the golden spoon. Right. What's going on with your fucking face, buddy? You should be called Teeth Face. Dude's nothing but mouth. Like a horse. Ugh. He does look like a horse, actually, to be fair. Look at those lifeless, crackhead eyes, man. Th those eyes have seen many 
atrocities in this world. The 10,000 yard stare right there. He's not with us right now, guys. He's somewhere else. He's in Vietnam or something. The, the claustrophobia of this game is horrible. What's that? Fingers? He just picked up some fingers. Mom, can we get Cuphead? No, honey, we have Cuphead at home. Cuphead at home. Okay, talk to the guy with the golden spoon again. Thanks for the jar of fingers, but your buddy Eric is pretty hungry too. He would like to have a can of fingers. Take a look at his face. That's your buddy. He wants a can of fingers. Eric, mate, why do you want fingers for? Okay, we were in... Oh, okay, those are arrows. Were they always lighting up like that? Ooh. What is that? Freaking Alden Ring on the go here. He's in Kaled. It looks like something from Rick and Morty. Those freaking floating heads from outer space. Who is this? Is that meant to be Eric? What is the point? My friend isn't awake anymore. Okay, what, are they dead? Was that Stewie Griffin? I'll miss his laughs. So I'm so sorry. I'll get my revenge. What happened to your buddy brother Eric? Cupface. This is so far removed from what Cuphead is. It's not even the actual game. <laughs> Usually it's like, you know, it shows a bit of gameplay, base gameplay. And then, you know, something weird starts happening. But this is just, well, I guess it's meant to be like a free cup face game it's yeah you know what i mean it's not the actual cuphead game itself it's a i wouldn't even what a fan game you can't be a fan of cuphead if you're making this right click team fusion developer God. You know I can read minds, right? Your revenge won't help. Now I'm upset. I will eat you and Eric. Well, that's not good. What even is that thing? Eric, go back to your coffin. That's an order. What? Oh my goodness. Is that the golden spoon? That's Eric, right? Sorry, Cupface. I was hungry, so I ate him. But I love you, my friend. Goodbye. What is happening? What is going on right now? Winner! Yeah, you might want to just, like, throw your PC away at this point. Right. Gaming. That was not Cuphead. No. It, it definitely was not Cuphead. Video by Vibing Leaf. The game itself is available to play for both PC and mobile. The version provided is completely safe. Oh, okay. See, the thing about uh, Vibe and Leaf is that they actually do make what you see. They make the, these games. This was overall a really fun project to work on, and I've learned some new things working on it. Thanks for watching. Well, it's nice that, like, you can tell that Vibe and Leaf is kind of growing with their content and actually enjoying it along the way. And that's uh, it's really good to see that. I don't know what, what to make of it, in honesty. It was so far removed from what Cuphead was that it's... Uh, I don't know. But guys, be sure to go subscribe to Vibing Leaf, like the video, watch the videos for yourself, and we're going to move on to the last video. The last video was recommended to me on my Discord by Sonic the Hedgehog. Night Terrors, FNAF VHS by Valox. Recorded 1207-1983. 
In analyzing the VHS footage from the whatever the hell that is, Oniro Monomoscope, I am perplexed by the vivid nightmares of a child missing their frontal lobe. Despite this severe injury, the recordings depict complex, terrifying scenes of animatronic monsters, raising profound questions about how such elaborate dreams can exist without this critical brain region. Dr. Eliza Caulfield. Interesting, so I'm guessing that Oniro Monomoscope is something that can see into your dreams, and they recorded this kid dreams basically interesting here we go let's jump straight into this so this is a a reimagining of fnaf 4 I'd, I'd like to think so this is evan the kid that was bit by fredbear Okay, so the alarm went off and it's counting up. That's weird. I still, to this day, say that this room layout is so strange. Who has two doors either side? One would usually be a bathroom, right? If you've got like an ensuite. But like two hallways? I guess that should be the first indicator that something's not right here, that this isn't necessarily real or some kind of test or I don't know. I love the feel of Alox's videos now. It feels so grimy and so real. Like they've improved tremendously on their videos. It's really awesome to see. There's old Bonnie. Look at this layout of a house though. It's huge. Oh dear Lord, no. Close the... Close the door and keep it locked. Bolt it shut. Oh, I hated this game, man. It's one of those games that it relies heavily on like sound and it forces you to turn up your volume. It's, it's ridiculous. Mate, close the door. Clodor. That's Chica on the right. That's a big, like, closet there. That Chica? Oh, it is. You can see the cupcake look. Very well, very well done. Who let these animatronics in the house? my first question oh, obviously it's his dad right but oh my camera stopped recording sorry about that guys oh my god he was just in there look at that gaping mouth bro close your mouth your face is gonna get stuck like that in the wind that, that was so unnecessary, Foxy. Oh, God, it's just re re repeating nightmare. But then at that point, I'll be like, oh, you know what? It's not every time I die, I wake up. So I'll just go and try and have fun with these guys. Now, listen, can, you st can we talk about this? You're creeping me out. Why do you keep haunting me? It's time to face your fears, Evan. Sometimes the only way to face them is to face them. <laughs> there we go, guys. Quote that. There we go, guys. That was Valox. Fantastic creator. As always, be sure to go subscribe, like the video, all that good stuff. Go uh, view the video for yourself. Uh, I got to say, Valox has improved so much from when I, when I first started watching them, when they was doing backrooms content, all the way to now. You can really see the improvements of everything. It's just, it's looking really good.
it's looking good. So keep up the amazing work, Velox. That was really good. That is the end of this video, guys. The end of this reaction video. If you did enjoy, consider leaving a like rating and subscribing as this is the majority of my content reacting to analog horrors. I do live stream every Thursday as well. So uh, check in for that where I play games. I'll probably sometimes be reacting over there live as well. So be sure to check that out. Usually I'm streaming around 7.30 p.m., 8 p.m. UK time for like two, three hours. So be sure to check that out. You can also become a member today to get exclusive access to Discord channels and early access to videos. So consider joining and you'll also be supporting me, which I'll always be grateful for. But there we go, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.